Hey, it's Sasha Evdikov. It is September 17th, and welcome to the Rapid Recap. Now, this week's lesson is how the Federal Reserve, or also known as the Fed, and interest rates move the stock market. Now, I love doing these Rapid Recaps because I feel like you get so much knowledge, information, insight about the markets. Because when I first started trading, there was not a, not any of this YouTube uh, going on. There wasn't a lot of videos. In fact, the internet was a lot less bandwidth. I remember still when I had to use dial-up to connect to the internet. So a lot of things were very static. So I didn't really understand or have a lot of uh, education around to learn, number one, what the Federal Reserve uh, did, but more importantly, what it did in terms of how it moved the markets, and then taking it a step further, what I should be doing with my stocks or my positions based on the Federal Reserve. So how should I be positioning myself? So you might be wondering the same thing, especially if you're new to the Rapid Recap, if you've just joined me, uh, maybe you just started trading um, a month or two ago. So you might not understand how the Federal Reserve plays the, a role in the stock market. And I will tell you, it plays a pretty heavy role uh, in terms of the big boys, the the institutions, and how they purchase or sell stocks and companies. Um, The Federal Reserve is pretty powerful in the sense of uh, moving money and the control of supply and demand of money, but really they can only do one thing um, uh, to simplify things. They're either Uh, raising or lowering the supply of money. And that's what they do with interest rates. So they can hike or cut interest rates. And that's what they do. So this week's recap is really focused on the Federal Reserve or the Fed and about interest rates and how they move the stock market. So that's what we're going to start with today. So looking at a quick glance of the markets to see what it, it's been doing, and we're recording in uh, 1080p today, uh, just setting up my screens a little different. Hopefully this uh, is a little bit better resolution for some of you and to see the charts better. But in either case, uh, what happened in the markets is here we were consolidating for a, a short period of time. And as we were consolidating, it looked like the market was going to push higher and potentially get back to this level, potentially retest it, and then maybe reject it. Now today, looking at the intraday chart, just take a look at what's happened today. We basically had some statements that came out right around this region. You can see all this volatility in the five minute. We dropped heavily. Then we popped, dropped again, popped again, and then now we're back below the close or the open, I mean. So we're back below the opening price, which was right here. So if we draw that across, you can see the markets were kind of idle. And this is what things uh, people were doing, really. The professional traders were probably not trading as much here or p- slowly and lightly positioning themselves for this move. So when we look at it, during the intraday, we opened up right here, we go a little lower, and we're basically idling. We're moving very slowly. Then things drop. Okay, some people said, oh, it's very risky. Uh, I'm going to take my position off because based on the way that I'm positioned, I don't like or don't foresee the market moving higher. So there's a lot of sellers that came in. Then we pop back up. People uh, started buying based on the wording, based on analyzing the words, continued to pop higher, and then eventually people sold it back off. Now, you have to keep in mind that a lot of times during this action, during this action, during this action, there's going to be a lot of day traders or people that are going in for the short term. Uh, these these aren't usually people or traders that are trading for the long haul for the next uh, three, six months, or even two, three weeks to position their trades. They're looking for short-term gains. And uh, this really is a volatile session. Now, some of the other traders uh, before uh, that were slowly starting to position their posi- uh, their trades, their accounts, 
they were really starting to position a lot of their accounts uh, a lot earlier, probably the day before, right around here or even before over here. And that's why you might have gotten this uh, spike or this last couple of days of spiking because they could be positioning themselves for a potential interest rate movement, whatever they were positioning for. Now, keep in mind, we still did have technical data coming in into a triangle here. Uh, so it was bouncing right here off of this support line. So the technicals were there to confirm it, but positions were probably also being stacked right there uh, based on this report. And now based on this report, you can see we had a, a many more volume and shares coming in traded uh, based on that report and looking at the SPY, you can see exactly what was happening. Look, right here, the volume basically dies down. And when that volume dies down right here, okay, so there's our volume dying down. Then we have this huge spike. Everybody was waiting and building for this event because we had this huge surge earlier. Okay, and I'm looking at the spiders, SPY here, because it's easier to see the volume than on the SPX. There's more shares traded and so forth. So looking at this position or looking at the overall markets, you can see that we were building for this event. So if you're a trader, if you're an investor, you're looking to position yourself for this probably a few days before uh, the event. Now, if you're doing day trading, you can probably do it the day of because you don't need to move a lot of shares. You don't have to position yourself in a unique way in, in order to manipulate stocks because you just don't have maybe 20, 30,000 shares to get rid of or to purchase. Uh, but for other people, for institutions, the large traders, they're trying to position themselves for this move. Um, and that's what they were really doing throughout the week. So, if you're a little bit heavy positioned on one side and you don't like that position uh, because we have earnings coming out, uh, you do the same thing for the Federal Reserve. You change your position and you start changing it a few days before or you start changing it early to prepare for that event. So looking at the Federal Reserve, what is really happening when the Federal Reserve speaks or what does it really do? So first, let me explain that. Let me explain what the Federal Reserve does. Essentially, it is basically an interest rate hike or cut. So what they're doing is controlling the supply and demand of money. That's basically borrowing money and how the banks borrow money. So they have to use uh, the bank's money needs to be used for a mortgage. So if you're uh, purchasing a house, if you're purchasing a car, any larger purchasing that has to happen and where a loan has to be created, uh, then uh, interest rates, that rate to borrow money for a regular person is more expensive. So for example, if we're looking to purchase a house and we want to take out a loan of, let's just say, $100,000 to keep numbers and simple math easy, uh, you know, they might give you a 4% interest rate. The bank does through the uh, Federal Reserve, right? Because they set the interest rates and so forth. So once this interest rate is locked in, you're good to go. You get it at your 4%. However, if let's say you didn't buy that house this couple of months and you're looking to buy that house maybe uh, a year later, but the interest rates were higher, now all of a sudden that $100,000 house, in which case you're going to be paying, let's say, instead of 4% interest, similar to a credit card where you may pay 18 or 22% interest every month, for a house, you're paying, you know, 3% or 4%. Now that 4% might actually be 4.5% or 4.25%. It's more expensive because it's more expensive for the banks to borrow that cash as well. So what does this do to the people that are actually borrowing money for, let's say, a house or a car and so on? 
So comparing our two different variations, if you're borrowing money for a $100,000 home, depending on your down payment, the interest rate, and so on, let's just keep things simple. A $100,000 home, 4% interest rate, um, you know, let's just say that $100,000 home actually will end up costing you in the end $200,000. Now, if the interest rate goes up, let's say half a percent or a few more percentage points higher, now instead of you know buying that hundred thousand dollar home and paying it off, you're you spent two hundred thousand dollars. Instead of two hundred thousand dollars, it may actually be two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. So what does that mean? That means the monthly payments are going to be larger. That means that you're going to be paying more for things, which in the end causes you as the buyer or consumer to have less money in your pocket. And when you have less money in your pocket, you go out and spend less at restaurants. You go out and spend less at businesses. You spend less at different stores and purchasing your phones or whatever it is that people purchase these days. You just end up purchasing less because you have less money since you're paying more money for these interest rates. You're paying more for fees, sort of say. So in general, to sum things up, it gives a ripple effect. As the Federal Reserve raises rates, that means the cost of borrowing money, the supply of money becomes more expensive. So everybody else has less money and businesses also generate less revenue because people have less money to spend. Now, when they lower rates and cut interest rates, people have more money because interest rates go down. So they'll do this because of different situations in the economy. If the economy is great, then they may raise those rates and you know let people pay more money on interest because things are going fantastic. But if things are not going so great or things are uh, you know, a little bit like a depression or a recession or whatever, things are going really bad, then they'll cut rates. That way, people can go ahead and stimulate the economy. They'll buy homes and then they'll have more leftover capital to go and use them to spend on discretionary things like food or going out to eat, buying gadgets, uh, computers, new cars. So it stimulates because typically a dollar or a purchase rolls over three times. So if you go into a store, you buy something, then that business owner has more capital. He goes buy something and then the next person buys something. So it typically rolls over multiple times. And that's really essentially what the Federal Reserve does. So how does this affect the markets in terms of movements? Well, you know, if the cost or the income that businesses are generating becomes less in the future or it becomes more expensive, then revenue can slip or revenue can fall. So there are a lot of other factors and ripple effects, but uh, all those things are not immediate. You're probably wondering when looking at the markets, what's the immediate effect on the Fed? And, you know, what happens to the market? Well, what happens to the markets in general is you get this volatility effect. It's similar to earnings. Uh, When you take a look at a stock, like let's just use Apple as the example. When you have earnings, you have these major... um, sell-off points like this. Now, this one is company-specific. You'll have the same thing on like GMCR right here. The huge drops and the gap downs that happen because of earnings. Now, with the Federal Reserve, since it affects the overall economy and the health, because it's the interest rates, they affect everybody, you know, that's why the market becomes very volatile. And that's why the news goes out on the market. So that's why we have all this volatility, because people are quickly trying to make a decision, usually the professional institutions, to decide what direction they want to go. Now, when you do this or look at this, typically for me, I leave my positions as they are for some time for the last couple of days. If my positions were stable, if my positions were stable, I will typically leave them on as they are. So let's say, for example, take, for example, the Dow Jones or the diamonds. If you are trading the diamonds and you got into this uh, position, you shorted this over here, or even if you were late over here, 
you would get into that position, you'd short it, you'd continue sell some into strength, whether it's somewhere over here, you'd sell some into strength. So now you're out about half of your position, let's say. And now you're waiting. Now let's say the market starts moving up higher right here and you're starting to approach your stop levels. So for simple sake, let's say your stop level is going to be right around this level. Now, if we have a Fed meeting that day, this is probably the only time I give it a little bit of cushion room or wiggle room to wiggle beyond my stop. And that is because many people get freaked out when things happen and news happens in the Fed. So for this hour, you have to be mindful an understanding of what's going on underneath the market, depending on how it's moving, where the shares are traded. And if you go to the one minute chart, you can kind of see this high frequency. This is really what happens is the high frequency. So we have a lot of high frequent trading right here that happens uh, to the downside first, then we start popping. So it makes me wonder, okay, so uh, are we actually going up or are we actually going down? Then we see a, a cluster of this a volume right here of this bullish uh, spike. So that brings the stock back to even or neutral since the announcement. Then we get another dip in where we have a few more bearish spikes. So to me, this kind of tells me people are positioning on the negative sense. So what is happening here? Now the next pop higher, huge leg up, this could be some shorts covering that we're in a little too tight. So what happens is this things, these prices start to accelerate. We have a few little pops and then you get people that are scared and then they may jump into all of this and it rides those stocks or these, um, these indices a little higher. And then what happens? Now we start really the calm minded, more professional step back in and short it again. So look at how this plays out as people digest the news. We basically go from very heavy bearish uh, spikes to anytime we pop, we get bullish spikes, bearish spikes, bullish spikes, bearish spikes. And you can see what happened. We continued to move lower. We got up to the opening price. The opening price broke through it a little bit, but then rejected it and continued lower. So there's a lot of volatility that's going to happen. So you either have to be mindful and be patient that this is going to happen or really look underneath. If you're brand new, brand new to stock market or trading, I recommend you don't trade uh, one or two days before these federal announcements, these Fed announcements. And that is because it's going to whip you around with the volatility. Now, if you've been trading a while, you can hold your position so long as you took your profits uh, earlier or previously. Now, when looking at all this, you know you have to be mindful of your positions, your stops, what you're willing to risk, and how uh, how experienced you are. And the better you you do it, the more frequently you do it, you watch it, you'll get a sense of what's going on and what's happening in these markets and how you should be positioned. So hopefully that explains to you how the Federal Reserve uh, really kind of works and how it plays in the stock market. Um, now, a lot of these effects will come over the next three to six months. If we did get uh, a raise in interest rates, then the market would be positioning for that, maybe in a little bit of a different way. And again, some of the actual effects in the consumer space, in the businesses, probably wouldn't happen till maybe six months later because it takes time for people to save money on interest rates. It takes time for them to go out and shop, to spend it on businesses. So it's that cause and effect, the energy mentality. So... With that in mind, let's move on to some actual stocks and uh, take a look at them specifically, just at what's moving, uh, what ha isn't moving, and just some um, some stock picks in, in the sense of what's going on with the technicals. So uh, looking here, GMCR at, still acting weak, coming back to this trend line, looking at that daily. You can see we're starting to accelerate again lower. It, you know, it's in this gap, but... Uh, this was that gap we're looking on all the way over here at that trend line. So it came up to it, retesting it and rejecting it. And you can see it's on wider price spread, meaning 5% in a day rather than little tick marks here earlier. 
Then we have uh, Dish right here. I was looking for this stock to break lower. Uh, that was actually what I was waiting for, was for it to break lower, but it didn't happen. So no position taken, no trades occurred. You know, that's what we were waiting for, waiting for that break. It was building cause for it, uh, but it's bouncing right now. So move on, either wait patiently for another opportunity sometime in the future or move on to another stock. Apple right here. Again, looking at it, here we are building cause. What happens? We build cause, we decrease in volume, and anytime the smart money comes in, here we are selling right there as we decrease here in that trend line of volume. Now, one thing that's interesting about this, those of you that took the um, technical analysis course here, here's an interesting little thing for you guys. Take a look at this and how that plays into the trade. This is the Fibonacci levels. Looking at the two points right here. So here's our swing highs and it's a critical point in area because we've came up to these levels multiple times. But those are the highs. We take them down to here and look at where it retraces all the way to that 61.8 level. Comes out really nearly perfect. So we we basically rejected it a handful of times. And now again, looking at it, it's building for a potential next leg down. So cleaning things up. You could say that here is an ABCD pattern. It's a little sloppier one, but uh, you can say that A to B, B to C, and potentially we could see lower prices to that earlier price mark I mentioned in the uh, critical charts. Okay, and looking at the overall other companies, um, UAL is the only one that kind of caught my attention today, but I don't like to trade uh, to the bullish side in a bearish market state. You can do it, uh, but I, I don't prefer to do it. Uh, looking at the financials is really where I was looking at today. And this is, this is going to be funny to really look at how all these different financials are moving. So take a look. Here they are, breaking it down. Here we got BAC, Bank of America. Here's our resistance line, similar to Apple. And as we look at it here, take a look. Here we have our rejection, and then we have a bounce, okay, bounce, and now it's starting to break this supporting trend line on heavy volume. So we have, again, A to B, B to C, potentially C to D, so we could see some serious trouble in the financials if things accelerate. That's if things accelerate. They can, of course, bounce, but... Um, but if we start seeing an acceleration follow through tomorrow, you could see some trouble. AMTD, this one on the weekly, take a look, weekly trend broken as we zoom in. Let's just go to a two day, it might be a little bit cleaner. Look at that, similar to Bank of America. What do you think they're doing? They're building and look at the volume here uh, recently. Boom, higher volume. Okay, next one, JP Morgan, another financial. Look at this. Here's our daily. Here's our rejection level right here. You could say that here we have our A to B, B to C, and C to D could be coming in right there. So this one didn't fully break yet. Here's that support line. You want to watch it. If we see a rejection right here or breaks lower of this support line, that's going to be trouble, big trouble. Here again, City, Citigroup, same pattern. Look at that. It's building. It's building. All you need to do, Morgan Stanley, is watch these patterns. And when they break, the one that breaks the fastest, the fastest, the cleanest, and the shortest amount of time, you don't have to trade all of them. You just have to trade the one that's the best. Even if you get the one that's second or third best, imagine the potential, your profit potential from that move. So here, they're all the same patterns. They're setting up to give you an opportunity. This one, SunTrust, is breaking early. It's breaking earlier than the other one. So here's our pattern. Look at it. It's breaking right now. Today, it already broke it. There's the heavy volume. Here's our rejection levels. Here's some other little clues that were subtle, but there was our A to B, B to C, potentially C to D. 
the signs are right there. There's all your signs and it's breaking. That's exactly what some of the other stocks, that's what you're watching for, for these other stocks to do this, this exact break. Okay. Then we have BBT. Same thing. Look at this one. Starting to break. It's right there making its move. Again, if we zoom out, just taking it out to the weekly, you can see there's our break. Here's a little pop. If it continues, you could see trouble. If we go to the three day, there it is. Okay. So WFC, financials, Wells Fargo, go back to the daily, same thing, breaking. And what is it doing it on? Heavy volume. What were we doing before? We were building cause, cause right here, decreasing, building cause for lower prices. And there we go. There's our break. Take it out right here. You can see how that plays out nicely, perfectly. And that's exactly what you may see with some of the other stocks. You're watching these other stocks as well for similar breaks. It'll allow you to capitalize, you know, especially if we continue on that move lower to right here, 49, $3. That's a $3 gain in probably a couple of days or a week. So that's what you're watching for in these companies, in these um, sectors, and in the financials. And the reason I'm talking about financials today is because of the Fed and the interest rates. So Overall, the market, and my opinion, is still the same. Uh, I, I don't change my opinion thinking that uh, everything is rosy, everything is perfect, and we're going to fly to the moon and skyrocket higher. In fact, I still think we're building for lower prices, but uh, things can change. We will see what tomorrow's action is. If tomorrow's action is healthy and we start moving higher, all of a sudden change directions, then, of course, I may change my mind, but it will be usually in a week or two. I don't change my mind very quickly because I look at multiple weeks rather than high-frequency trading or just a one-time event. I'm looking for stability. And so far, the past, the last few um, weeks and months have told me that we're building for lower prices. And if you take a look at uh, the weekly... And you just take uh, just the most recent couple of weeks. Let's say what's what's happened in the last four weeks right here. Where were we and where are we now? We're basically even. If you take the last, let's say, since June, where was June? June was over here and just draw a line to here. Are we lower or higher? We're lower. Draw it from before. Are we lower or higher? Lower. We're still lower. How about from August of last year? Are we lower or higher? We're about even. So really, if we're still even from August of last year, does that tell me we're going to skyrocket to the moon for a year? We haven't done anything? No, it doesn't. In fact, it puts me more in the bearish camp. And really, that's where I'm looking at based on where things are setting up. Um, so watching this line right here, this is the line you want to watch. Um, and we've talked about this before. If we get here, we could reject there's a couple scenarios I'm watching when when we're watching this level. If we get here and we reject, this confirms a bearish trend and more negativity will come into the markets. If we break this and move sideways, then again, we're just moving sideways idly. And then it's a trader's market. You're stock picking. If we break this... And then we continue to move higher very quickly and we break this next level right here. Then you can see some real trouble because we're moving up on air. Uh, chances are that's too fast, too quickly, too accelerated. So that could also spell trouble. Of course, we could reject here. And then again, I would be adding more to my short. So at this point, anytime you see weakness like this, like in Apple, when we're looking at these levels right here coming into this and you see these rejections, you can start adding to your short right there or adding when it breaks this uh, because you potentially should be or could be short right around that level. So you're short at that level or even if you were in it right around this level, you could have been short right there. You're still way at higher prices. You're short at higher prices. And if you really got in at the right time, it'd be here right around this level. 
So you, sh you should be at those higher levels. And now you're waiting for the next uh, leg down to add to your position. If you're in Bank of America, the same thing. You got these three that you were short potentially. Really, you only had these two options for the short. Um, so you had these options because this was your swing high. So you were short at either this point or this point. And now as we pop right here and we start to reject again a second time, you add to that short. So now you're putting back additional shares that you were short um, and where you took profits here. Now you're adding those shares back again because you're short somewhere over here. You had multiple weeks to get into that stock short. So that's how you play these markets in the Fed. I hope that gives you some insight, some things to think about. If you're new, I highly recommend you step aside from trading uh, during these days, uh, the Federal Reserve, because you can see we basically were moving up on air and then the rest of the day we sold off and we're back below the opening price. This whole day was about the Fed. And that's one of the reasons the last couple of days I didn't post critical charts because of this. So my goal is tomorrow or even Saturday to post some more critical charts for you guys to evaluate things with a better state of mind. And that's really what we're going to go and look at but if you're trading during these days, it's like trading during earnings, waiting and wondering what's going to happen. You want to get rid of your position before that happens. And then if things still continue moving in your direction the right way, then you go ahead and, you know, uh, add to your position or change your position. All right. So thanks again for joining me. I hope you learned a lot today uh, regarding the Federal Reserve, how things move and operate, and maybe what you should do regarding your position. So keep those things in mind when trading. If you're doing things more high frequency, it's going to be a roller coaster ride. If you're a little more calm and more stable, you should be able to really adjust your positions lightly or slowly as you, the Fed announcement starts to come in. So keep those things in mind as you're trading and investing uh, in the markets. So hope you enjoyed the lesson and had a great week so far. Enjoy your Friday. Make it a great one. Have a great weekend. And I will see you next time.